Before moving on, a key point that is important for you to know right now is the right terminology. Let's talk about this for a bit so we can build a solid foundation. Without being clear on these terms, all questions and problems that you might ask and be asked about in statistics later on, it will start getting confusing pretty quickly and there is absolutely no reason for it. We will solve this right here. The first thing to always ask yourself first is if you are dealing with the population or the sample. This is the first step. The second step is knowing what these terms mean. So let's get started. Big N is the number of data points in the population. The whole population consists of 20,000 people. So N, population size, is equal to 20,000 people. And N, sample size, is 50. Both are constants. From here on is about what we are trying to know and none of the following variables are constants. All have a degree of variability because we are making assumptions and any assumption introduces an error either seen from the population side to the sample or seen from the sample side to the population. So because there is some degree of error in our assumptions, we are going to take this into further consideration when coming up with answers. This brings us to the first concept of measures of dispersion called variance. What is variance? Let's look at an example. Let's say we have two funds and you invest $100,000 in each fund starting at 1st of January. At the end of the year, both funds delivered exactly 7% on point. We say that the mean for each fund is 7%. Throughout the year, fund 1 had a peak of plus 15% and had a trough of minus 20%, but ended up at 7%. Fund 2, on the other hand, varied between plus 8% and plus 6% and also ended up at 7% as well. We say that fund 1 had a higher variance in comparison to fund 2 even though both ended up producing the exact same result. If we graph this, all this means is that the fund that varied more, its distribution has a wider variance, and our fund 2 has a narrower variance, so it's tighter around the mean. What about standard deviation? What is standard deviation? In order to keep our calculation simpler, we do what is called a standardization. This process is also called unit conversion. Let's say we have the same calculation for a sample. But one of the researchers is from the UK and came up with the X values in pounds because they use the imperial system. The other researcher is from Portugal and there they use the metric system. They both came up with the same conclusions but one is presenting the X values in pounds, the other in kilograms. Do the end results change? No, but it's harder to read and make assessments between both. So we use what's called a standard deviation as a unit of measurement. Instead of showing the dispersion in weight, we show it in standard deviations from the mean. When we get to the distributions, we will do some calculations, but for now, just know that standard deviation is a way of referring to the same dispersion, the x values around the mean, but using normalized measurements. Mean, either seen from the sample or from the population, is the sum of all values by the size n. So in this case, 10 plus 20 plus 30 divided by 3, it's 20. In a more generic form, and we will need this later on in more complicated examples, it is the sum of all values, in our case from 1 to 3, divided by n. Proportion is exactly what the name implies. It is a proportion of the total value. Let's say 3 out of 8 people won. This leaves 5 of 8 people that lost. Frequently, we need to compare proportions from samples. This sounds simple in the beginning and I am re-emphasizing this 
as it starts to get more complicated later on. We will work through this together. For now, I just want you to understand the importance of getting clear on the terms and if you are dealing from the population or the sample side so that you can make the correct assessment and proceed with the right calculations.